Hello and welcome to Daily Bread. I am so glad that you have joined us today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by an old friend. We want to welcome back to Daily Bread, Pastor Mike Lambert. So Pastor Mike, welcome back to Daily Bread. And Lo, it's good to be back with you guys again. All right, now before we begin, we always like to start with a word of prayer. So bow your heads with us. Lord, thank you so much for your loving watch care over each one of us. And Lord, I pray here on Daily Bread as we open your word, as we study here today, I pray for your Holy Spirit to bless and guide us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite each one of you to grab your Bibles, open up your Bibles with me. I'm going to Acts chapter 27, I'm going to read a short part of a story there in the 27th chapter. And... Um, I want to lift one basic thought for our devotional thought for today. So we're in Acts chapter 27, and I'm going to start with verse number 9. Please follow along with me in your Bibles. The Bible says, Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading uh, and ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Fennus, and there winter, which is in the haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and the northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing from there, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there rose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. By the way, that word Eurachlodon is a two-part word, which means east wind and big wave. And so this is a Eurachlodon storm, a storm from the east that produced these huge waves. They were in the midst of what we would call a hurricane. And when the ship was caught, verse 15, when the ship was caught and could not bear into the wind, we let her drive and run under a certain island, which is called Clauda. And we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, stroke sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. The third day we cast out the, uh, with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars uh, in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay upon us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among, among you, but of the ship. For, notice what the text says, for there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am and who I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must appear before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, wherefore sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. And that's kind of the point I want to lift from the story when the Apostle Paul simply said three simple words, I believe God. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. And the question is, so did that come true? Was it true that God delivered the Apostle Paul and all those that were on the ship? The answer to the question, absolutely let. Yes, go to the last two verses of the chapter. Uh, verses 43 and 44 say, But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they, they which could swim, that they should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on board, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. And so we, there we have the story. The Apostle Paul, he is in the midst of a group of prisoners that are sailing to Rome uh, to face judgment 
according to all their crimes. And the Apostle Paul, you know, he gives that uh, advice. He had been sailing on those waters in his different missionary trips for many years. He'd been sailing in those waters, and he said, you know, we're at the time of year where these storms come up all of a sudden. It would be best if we just stay here in this area to winter. And uh, the sailors, the captain of the ship, the businessmen of the ship, they considered uh, all the angles, and uh, they thought it was best that they would sail on a little bit further to a place called Fair Haven, where it was more commodious to winter, uh, to port at during the winter time. And so uh, the Apostle Paul, he stepped back, and they ended up sailing uh, nicely around the south end of the island of Crete. But once they had uh, gotten past the, the southern part, the southwest and the northwest part, of the island of Crete and got out into the open waters, they soon ran into what Paul told them most likely was going to take place. And they ran into this hurricane storm, which mollywhopped them on the starboard side of the ship and almost sunk that ship to the bottom of the Calypso deep. And in the midst of that storm, you get this picture where they're tossing everything out day after day goes by, and it got to the place where how much of their hope was gone. The Bible says all hope was gone. And in the midst of all that, here you have the Apostle Paul standing up on a slick deck. And the wind is blowing. The waves are crashing. The men are discouraged. They're hungry. They've given up all hope. And what does the Apostle Paul do? He stands up in the midst of all of that. And he says, men, be of good cheer, for I believe God. And in saying that, he gave hope and encouragement to all those who were on the ship. And so the simple point that I want to draw for our devotional today is this. Sometimes God has godly men. Sometimes God has Christians placed in a situation that they would not choose of their own volition. You know, sometimes godly men and women are placed in bad situations for the good of others. And that's what the apostle, the apostle Paul was not a criminal. And yet he was on his way to Rome with a bunch of men who were getting ready to be tried for their crimes. They were bad men. And if it were not for the apostle Paul, guess what would most likely have happened to that ship? It would have sunk to the bottom of the Mediterranean. But because Paul was there and he was willing to stand up in the midst of that ship and just simply say, hey, everybody, you can be of good cheer. I believe God. I believe exactly what he has told me. And all of you are going to be saved. And it's almost as if he was saying, do you believe? I believe that you and I as Christians today, we are living in days and times in pop society as we see events going around uh, in the world as we see some events happening in the Christian world, uh, I believe that a storm is approaching that will be relentless in its fury. You and I know that as we study Bible prophecy, Daniel and Revelation, that there are things coming between now and the time when Jesus comes that are difficult to face. And God is going to have his faithful people standing up in the midst of the storm. And I want to be one of those, don't you? I know you can <laughs> As we surrender to God day by day, as we put our trust in Him and His Word day by day, who knows uh, what He's going to ask us to stand up and be faithful in. But I want to be the type of person like the Apostle Paul, where you stand on the slippery deck of all the challenges of pop society. Just stand up and let people know, you know what? Don't be discouraged. There is hope. There is hope in God. There is hope in Christ. There is hope in the loving teachings of His Word. Stand up in the midst of trial and challenges and just simply say, I believe God. Um, so you and I, I don't know for sure what I might have to face in the future. I don't know for sure what you might have to face in the future. But we do know that challenging times are coming and uh, God can help us to be able to stand up and be a witness for him and be good to others, even in a bad situation. God sometimes places, this is what he did with the Apostle Paul, he sometimes places his godly ones in the midst of situations that are not, you know, we wouldn't choose it, it's not a healthy situation, 
but he places us there for the good of others. A couple of months ago, I was in a fender bender accident about a half hour south of Holland, Michigan. And I would not have chosen that situation. I was on my way to a Bible study. And uh, a gentleman pulled out in front of me on the highway and I was not able to stop in time and I hit him. And um, so we both pulled over, uh, everybody was okay. Uh, unfortunately, I totaled my car, which that, it didn't make me very happy because <laughs> I drive a 22 year old car with almost 400,000 miles on it. But you know what? It's paid for and I like it. And so I'm standing there on the side of the road and I'm talking to this gentleman who had pulled out in front of me and it didn't hardly damage his vehicle. So I'm talking to him. We had called 911. The uh, dispatch said, you know, the officer was on his way. It took 45 minutes for the officer to get there. And suffice it to say, I didn't, I didn't appreciate the situation. I had to call the people that I had Bible studies with, had to cancel the event. And uh, we were just, so we were sitting on uh, the back uh, uh, bumper of his truck. And uh, he was an older gentleman, mid 80s. And uh, so I started asking him a little bit and he opened up to me and uh, long story short, found out that this gentleman was on the discouraged side. He didn't have long to live. And so we had met on the highway. <laughs> it wasn't the best situation. But I realized, you know what? Maybe God has allowed this to happen so that I could meet him and give him a little courage. And so I asked him, I asked him how things were going. I asked him if he believed in God. He said he believed in God. And then he, he mentioned something, he said, but I don't think God loves me. And he said, and I'm pretty sure that he would never be able to forgive me for what I have been involved with. He was a Vietnam vet and he ended up being involved with some things that you know, no one likes to see. And so I was able to sit there on the bumper of his truck and I let him, I, and I asked him, I said, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? I said, I don't mean to be presumptuous. You know, we're not friends. We don't know each other. Um, but may I ask you a question that has to do with life and death? And he said, go ahead and shoot. Looks like we've got time. And so I asked him, you know, I said, you mentioned that your health is not well and you don't have long to live. Uh, I said, if your life were to end today, would you have hope of heaven and eternity. And, he's, and that's when he said, well, I, he said, I believe in God, but uh, you know, God could never forgive me. I and mean, God certainly doesn't love me. <laughs> and so I then asked him permission. I said, well, would you mind if I share with you some of my favorite promises from God's word? And I was able to share with him, John 3, 16, for God so loved who? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I let him know that he was alive on planet Earth right now. And John 3, 16 says, God loves the world. And I said, as long as you're sitting on planet Earth, God loves you. And you know what he told me? He says, I remember my grandma uh, telling me about that verse. And then he said, but God could never forgive me. And so you know where I went next. Went to 1 John 1, 9 and said, well, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to, to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I, he was said, well, that can't mean you know, everything. And I said, it does mean everything. I said, God loves you with an everlasting love. He sent his son to redeem you from sin. And if you will take some time, I said, just take some time by yourself between you and God and have that simple talk with God. Let him know how you feel. Let him know that you're sorry, confess your sins, and he will forgive you. And then I share with him Revelation 3.20 about how Jesus is standing at the door and knocking and how we can invite Jesus into our lives. And so that was an opportunity. It wasn't the best opportunity for me. It wasn't the best situation, but it reminded me, you know what happens sometimes? And you know this is true. Sometimes God allows Christians he allows those who are trying to follow him and keep their eye on him and obey his word. Sometimes he allows godly men and women to be placed in bad situations for the good of others.
And the Apostle Paul one day, a long time ago, he was in a situation like that. And in that situation, he stood up and he said, be of good cheer, I believe God. And all those that were with him were encouraged. They were given hope and they were saved. So you and I, we have that challenge today. Are we going to live our lives daily for Christ and stand up? It's easy to stand up in easy times, but in difficult times. And just simply say, you know what? I believe God. And with that, we will bring hope and courage to others. I wish and I pray that that will be the case with each one of you. Will you please bow your heads with me as we pray? Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for the privilege of considering your word this day. Lord, it's our heart's desire that in both good times and difficult times that you will give us the strength. You will fill us with your spirit and give us the strength to just simply stand up for all to see and say, I believe God. And we ask that in this, Lord, you will help us to give encouragement and hope to all those that we meet. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Pastor Mike, thank you so much for sharing today's devotional. You're welcome, Lord. And we want to thank you for joining us for Daily Bread as well. Before you go, I'd like to leave you with a promise that comes from God's Word. And today's promise comes to us from Psalm 6 and verse number 9, where it says, The Lord hath heard my supplication, the Lord will receive my prayer. Isn't that a great promise? To know that when we come to God, He hears us. There's lots more promises that can be found in God's Word. And I encourage you, as always, to pick up God's Word, spend some time reading and studying its sacred pages. Thank you for joining us for Daily Bread today. I hope you are blessed, and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, so long. Our community is blessed with people who inspire us to spend time with Jesus every single day. Your support makes local, uplifting, community-focused programming like Daily Bread possible. To find out how to give, use the QR code below or visit our website at the link in our bio. And don't forget to like and subscribe to be inspired every day.